So let's segue from those very intense topics to something a bit more close to home. So my audience is mainly like high school students and college students. Um, so for high school or college students who are interested in transportation research and policy, do you have any advice you would give them on how to take their first steps? Definitely. Um, I think there's a few different things you can do. Uh, my advice might be a little bit more oriented towards college students, because um, that's really where I kind of got my start. But um, I think some of these things would also apply to high school students. Um, I think one thing that's important to do is kind of like become well versed in the transportation policy um, dialogue and developments in that space. Um, and I can recommend some resources if you want to like touch up on your reading and follow along with kind of the latest news in transportation policy um, and research. Um, I think City Lab has always been a good uh, resource. Um, there's some good substacks like Exasperated Infrastructures by Sam Sklar um, and David Levinson's Transportist um, are also good places to find some more like um, kind of transit nerdy uh, infrastructure and policy conversations. Um, and I also really like this uh, sort of a, a web-based uh, magazine called Works in Progress. Um, and Works in Progress kind of highlights um, a lot of interesting developments in you know rapid transit construction around the world, for example, or some exciting new projects that are coming up. Um, so I would say that is probably my first area of recommendations is just kind of like join the conversation and make sure you're paying attention to what's going on around the world. And that can hopefully help you figure out, you know, whether it's something you're interested in and, um, you know, also just learn more. Um, and then you can also join a community group around transportation or um, go to meetings. So that's one thing that I did when I, when I first went to NYU, um, although I was, you know, in grad school at the time. Um, but if, if you're in the U S or Canada, or, or even maybe a few other places around the world, there's, Often um, major cities will have what's called a transportation camp. Um, and this is like a one day sort of, um, it's a conference, they, they sort of call it an unconference, um, but it's really like a bottom up kind of community driven um, day of discussion and interesting sessions around transportation. Um, but there's also, you know, a lot of uh, cities will just have like, um, you know, monthly meetings for young professionals in transportation or uh, social events. And so that's another place to kind of meet people that are already working in the space. Um, and you might get to know them and you can kind of understand a bit more about what they do and, and what opportunities are out there. And then the last thing I would say is probably just like, you could always start your own project. Um, so Sophia, I mean, you're like the um, or example of all of this because you've um, been involved in so many different transportation projects recently. Um, but I think, you know, it's these days, it's really easy to get your hands on some data and to manipulate that data and to answer some interesting questions. So, you know, you could go to your local transit agency's website and download their schedules and try to see, you know, whether um, what neighborhoods in your community are being underserved potentially, don't, don't have enough transit service relative to the population, for example. Um, you know, you can go and download um, other like census information, you know, like I said, with this, you know, where are people moving and be able to highlight the donut effect. Um, and you don't really need a lot of technical expertise to be able to do stuff at the more basic level. I mean, you can always, you know, become more and more advanced. Um, but if you did something like that, you know, write it up into a cool little blog post, maybe nobody will ever look at it, but it's still kind of something to be proud of. And it gives you a chance to kind of practice your the kind of skills that you might need uh, to do transportation research. Yeah, I mean, it's such a it's such an interesting field and so much of the like the questions are so concrete that you can ask and the data is also typically most of the time publicly available. So I think I would love more high school students and college students to get involved because I, I certainly am very lucky to have been able to be exposed to the world of transportation so early. Yeah, well, why don't you talk about the kind of your version of this project, right? The the research paper that we ended up publishing. Uh, quite oh, sure. Well, we ended up working together on the research paper, the exact title, I forget, but it was like the effect of remote work on urban transportation emissions, right? Um, and we looked at 141 cities across the world and we compared the pre-COVID rates and during COVID rates of transportation emissions and empirically quantified how much does a 1% increase in remote work mean for urban transportation emissions.
Yeah, exactly. So that was like a very concrete question. Um, and there was great public data available on both the emission side and on the um, remote work side. And so, you know, it was complex and you, you ended up adopting a lot of fairly um, interesting and, and useful methodologies for it. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's just something that, you know, it can start from there. And then, you know, it was recently published in a, in a leading academic journal. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, well, it was a great project. And I'm very grateful for all your all your guidance and mentorship. Of course, it was my pleasure. Well, what's one question about transportation that you don't think we're asking enough? Um, that's a great question. I think, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about the the green transition or the the you know net zero transition and trying to decarbonize the transportation sector um and there's some elements of it that i think maybe people don't pay enough attention to and so one um is you know how we can actually build sustainable transportation more cheaply and quickly um so one thing that came out of the meeting that we had in, in Southeast Asia was that, you know, the different representatives from the, the member countries in Southeast Asia were all there. And they said, well, you know, it's great to have all this advice, but where are we going to get the funding to actually build all of this stuff that you guys are recommending? Um, and so that's a major bottleneck to a lot of sustainable transportation policy and, and infrastructure development. And so looking at ways to build things more cheaply and more quickly um, really kind of help would help to ex accelerate um, progress towards decarbonization. So I think we're in the stage now of really moving from what can be done to, you know, how can it be done um, and how to do that more efficiently and, and more cost effectively. And then the other side of that as well, for me, this is something that I've recently been doing a lot of research into through my work is on the, um, what are called like just transitions. So this is looking at how you can manage the transition to a decarbonized transportation sector in a way that um, is equitable and doesn't leave anyone behind. So this is looking a bit more at the social dimension and saying, well, you know, if all you do is just make, you know, driving super expensive to kind of drive, or, no pun intended, but drive people away from, from their cars and, uh, you know, onto public transit, you're going to end up in a situation where you have a lot of people who rely on their cars to get to work and they're low income and they don't really have another option because transit doesn't reach their community. Um, so I think looking at ways to make sure that the, the some of the impacts of de decarbonizing transportation policy, um, you know, are, are mitigated, especially for those who are already disadvantaged. Um, like low-income communities, for example. So that's that's another side of it that I've recently been thinking a lot about and writing about a little bit. Well, those are great questions to ask. But looking to the future, um, what's the transportation problem um, that you're most excited to work on next? And maybe you can talk a bit about what you're thinking about for rebuilding transportation systems in Ukraine as well. Yeah. So this is a a really interesting project that I've been working on recently. And I mean, I I wish it's I wouldn't say excited is the right way to think about it. I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm I'm horrified and uh, and I wish I you know this work didn't need to ha to happen. Um, but I've had the opportunity to to provide some guidance to the Ukrainian government on how to rebuild transportation infrastructure um, and how to specifically how to prioritize that rebuilding. Um, so you know in Ukraine, of course, there's an enormous amount of damage, um, and there's also I think you know a lot of um, challenges that they were facing even before the war in terms of, you know, efficient uh, transportation. And so um, there's a lot of opportunities and they talk a lot about building back better. And, um, you know, I think that's a really a laudable goal. And then there's also a lot of funding available. So, uh, you know, the European Union and also a lot of other countries around the world have pledged to provide financial support for Ukraine to rebuild transport infrastructure. And so the question is really then, how do you take all of this funding that's available and, you know, this enormous amount of um, needs in terms of infrastructure rebuilding and also modernization, and how do you choose the projects in, you know, kind of what sequence to really accelerate the recovery as quickly as possible um, and, you know, help the Ukrainian people achieve their goals for the future. So it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting and complicated project to be working on. And I, I'm looking forward to, to being able to help Ukraine in that recovery process. That's amazing. That I think 
overall from this whole interview, what I've learned is like your work at ITF is, is great in the sense that it blends a lot more of that human aspect and also current events um, and helping real people into the transportation research that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And I think it's, it's really um, rewarding to get to be able to work with, you know, um, countries who really need support and um, help them find solutions to their challenges. Well, that's all the questions that I have. If there's anything else you'd like to discuss, feel free to. But thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. No, thank you, Sophia. This is really fun.